A sample chapter from Carlology. The day I had a brain scan. I think the brain is the weirdest thing in the body. It's probably the ugliest thing as well. I don't feel bad about saying that, because it's my brain that came up with it. It doesn't like the look of itself, to the point that it tells me not to eat anything that looks like a brain either. I don't like cauliflower, because that's kind of brain looking, and I've always got rid of the walnut off the top of a walnut whip before eating it. I've wondered if I'm in charge of the brain, or if the brain is in charge of me. After a bit of thought and people watching, I came to the conclusion that it's the brain that's in charge. It came to me when I saw some people getting on the push bikes. The first thing they did was put on a bike helmet, which to me is a sign that the brain is just looking after itself. It doesn't tell you to look after your knees or your elbows by wearing pads, it just tells you to look after it. So that's why I think the brain is in charge. Mind you, it wants me to think that, doesn't it? An odd thing about my brain, it isn't always interested in the same things as me. I can enjoy reading about something, but then have problems remembering any of it. It's like it's not interested. So I'd, I'd normally tell my girlfriend, Suzanne, about it as soon as possible, so that she can remember it for me. Then, if my brain blanks it out, I just ask her what the amazing thing was that I told her. I use her brain a bit like a, a backup drive that you have for a computer. Anyway, I didn't do that well in my exams at school, so I decided to take a mentor test to see if my brain had got any better with age. The test took place in a university building in London at 6.30pm. This worried me a bit, because my brain slows down as the day goes on. It's normally brilliant around 8.15am till about 9.45am. After that, it's, it's all downhill. There was me and 12 others taking the test. Odd bunch of people they were, they all seemed to know each other. I heard two of them talking about recent science news that surgeons had been able to keep a heart beating even though it wasn't connected to a body. I thought this was a waste of heartbeats and energy to be honest, it's, it's like going out and leaving the TV on. We're constantly being told to save energy and yet here's surgeons leaving heartbeats pumping. Everyone sat down ready to take the mentor test. I took the last seat that was available. The other people had all brought lots of pencils and had their own stopwatches. I had to borrow a pen from the mentor rep. This caused the others to tut. The test began. I'll be honest with you, it was tough, but the questions were multiple choice, so I went with my gut feeling at first. After a while though, even my gut was starting to pass on a couple of the questions. The test was broken into three papers, so we had a break between each one. The other people seemed quite calm with it all and chatted with each other in the breaks. One woman was even sat there doing a Sudoku, she was that relaxed. She couldn't get enough. But I think this is because people love to be tested these days. Every time I put the telly on now, there's someone asking me a question on who wants to be a millionaire, or eggheads, or the weakest link. Even my auntie Nora tried to grow a bonsai plant recently just because she'd heard Alan Titchmarsh say that they were hard to grow. Everyone seems to like a challenge, whereas my brain just prefers the easy life. The really odd thing was, None of the people taking the test ever seemed to laugh, which made me wonder if intelligent people need laughter. I thought about this on the way home. Maybe the brain doesn't really like laughing. Mad people who have faults with the brain laugh a lot, and babies whose brains haven't grown properly like a good laugh, but it seems that normal brains don't really like laughing. I got my mental results a few weeks later. They were a joke. But again, my brain didn't laugh. I decided for this chapter that it would be good to have a picture of my brain because at the end of the day it's that that's come up with what I'm telling you. I found a lad on the internet who said he could get his hands on an MRI scanning machine and said he'd be able to get me some good shots of my brain. I like to think about my brain a lot, which proves it also loves itself as well as being in charge, but I can't get my head around how the brain was created. I can grasp how humans might have developed from fish over time, but it's the brain bit that gets me. See, scientists always use the evolution argument when they don't know how things have grown an extra leg or learned to fly, but I don't understand how the brain could evolve. Evolve from what? You see, I have this theory that the brain might have come from another planet where brains ruled. A planet where there was no atmosphere and the brains just floated around thinking about stuff all day. They quickly became advanced because of the amount of thinking being done, and then somehow they came to planet Earth but found that they were useless because they couldn't move about by floating anymore. So one of the brainier ones got into a monkey's head, and 
the rest is history. Like I say, it's just a theory. Six days after emailing the lad about the brain scan, there I was in a bunker, deep below a London university, not far from where I took the mentor test, with Hugo and Joe and a million pound camera. Joe explained how it worked. I, I pretended I understood. I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. If he'd have taken a picture of what my brain was doing at that point, he would have seen it overheating. I could tell that Joe loved that machine, though. He said stuff like, There's plenty of elbow room, more than 27 inches from side to side for a more comfortable shoulder, chest and upper body scan. True comfort and quality. Some patients drift off to sleep, it's so comfortable, he said. If the medical profession doesn't work out for Joe, he could easily get a job on QVC flogging these scanning machines. I started to feel a bit nervous about coming face to face with my brain. It was either that, or it was my brain that felt nervous about seeing it. I get like this whenever I have any sort of medical test, as doctors always seem to find something, don't they? That's what doctors do. They're like archaeologists who just keep digging until they hit bone, or car mechanics who always find something that needs replacing. So I prefer just to leave it for as long as possible before having to have a check-up, really.